John, how when 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 people ask like how how do you explain yourself? Like, and we'll, we'll we'll kick literally right off into it. This, this is literally how we how we rock and roll, John. Uh, nothing too formal about it, but when people ask like who you are, what do you say? What what's the intro? <laughs> Whether well, the, it's the the typical in like the hey, bar what? or the family event. Uh oh, so it's not it's not a typical hey, what's your superpower? Where I'm like oh god, it's like white superpowers <laughs> for a second. No um, sir. Yeah, it's a. Uh, um, so, so what if I'm at a bar and and who's asking me the question? Is it family friend, uh, <laughs> someone who doesn't know me? What's what's going on there? <laughs> Let's say someone who doesn't know you comes up to you says, "John, man, what do you do?" And am I, am I like one drink in or four drinks in? Okay, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now it now that's a whole different answer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, I think I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, I'm I'm obviously the co-founder and, and CEO of of a, of a, a, a SaaS business, and and I think, you know, based on this podcast, I think I think you know, talking about a SaaS business is is probably uh, you know more of more of the, the interesting thing to focus on, and and you know, at the end of the day, you, you're creating technology um, to help service uh, an audience, right, and and. That idea of of creating technology is is way beyond just literally. Oh, you, you know, some people will respond and go, "Oh, so what? Are you do you code?" <laughs> I'm like, no, you know. Um, and and the idea of a SaaS business and and all the areas that it touches uh, is is incredibly interesting, right? Um, just, I think just as if I look at the, the the progress of 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 me over the last four or five years, I can truly say I'm an expert in 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 how to build and run a SaaS business, which is which is everything from, you know you know every every single aspect of a business it's business development it's marketing it's it's sales outbound outreach um you know it's it's um ux ui website product technology um retention strategies you know upsell strategies uh you know customer success it's um you know it's uh commission structures it's it's you know it's 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 all of that it's 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 um it's raising funds. It's VC conversations. It's projections. It's burn rate models. It's uh, you know, it's literally the gambit of of every single part of, of a business. And and I think once you've built that kind of skill set, oh, and don't forget, it's people management, of course. And 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 the the joy of building building a business and, and having a community and having a you know uh, people who who you care about and and can see their growth, right? Which is probably the, the most exciting part of it. But you know, when you're building something like that that literally touches everything. Um, you know, and, and I'm coming from a, a background of marketing and advertising. I, I think it's, it's it's amazing, right? And it's very different to um, it's very different to to some very specific jobs or, or businesses that you, that you can own. Um, but in in some degrees, it's not that different to to really having a, a business a product on Amazon because you also touch a whole bunch of of aspects of of different kinds of businesses as well. You know. So why Zong Guru? Was it was this was Zonguru the first company ever founded, or was there previous companies too? Just to, to go backwards a bit on on your history. No, no, uh, Zongu. Well, yes, Zonguru was the second company. The first company I, I founded was a was a, a, a company building uh, products on Amazon, right? So it's a private label uh, brands. But um, yeah. you know, if you want to step back a little bit, I don't know how far back you want to go, but um, you know, I've had a few companies before that. Um, uh god i'm trying to remember the names of them right now but uh, i had go go productions uh which was really like a an events company that i started while i was in college yeah um, i gave that domain up like an idiot i should have kept that go <laughs> yeah uh um what else did i have i had um uh y to you uh uh no as to you sorry as to you uh um which was a uh kind of a, a a club party that I used to throw in London at, at one stage on on the underground uh, and under the London Bridge. These under, underground catacombs. I used to throw some kind of rave parties there back in the day. Um, you know, uh, so you know, I've, I've had a few companies, but I've always had FOMO, which is like you know, my career over the years has, has been in advertising. I was an ad exec at some of the big advertising companies on the digital side. Um, you know, blue chip big clients like Gillette. Um, you know. Uh, uh, public uh, uh, public storage is one. Uh, Burger King was another one. Uh, the whole have it your way rebranding. So you know, I was working with very high level execs at, at kind of these big, ad, you know, fast paced advertising companies, and it was a great career. But I always had what I call like entrepreneurial FOMO, right? I, right? I always wanted to have my own business, but it was 
very hard for me at the time to make that that jump. Um, you know, when you're in this like high powered, high paced career, yeah. um, and then trying to figure out like, hey, what is this other thing uh, that you want to launch? Um, you know, and starting that uh, w w was very frustrating. So it took me. You know, I had a few side things on the go that, that were just fun, but it took me, um, you know, close on 20, 20 years before I really truly made the jump. Um, and that and that happened when I when I stumbled into Amazon and I literally stumbled into it, um, you know, in, in early, I think it was 2012 is, is kind of when I stumbled into it. Yeah. What was the first product? So so for anyone listening too, so John, you, you actually started like the the Amazon ecosystem. You You had your own private label brand too. What, give us a bit of context. How, how did that start? How did you dive into the deep end? And obviously, like 2012, 2014, Amazon is a lot different. So we'll have to get into the technicals. But yeah, I mean, this is this is literally, you know, myself and 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 a good friend of mine who who um, you know who, who's who's a who's a partner on on Zonguru. Um, you know, he his name's Adam Hudson, and he and he um you know, he's, he's got a business called reliable education. It's a, it's a business based in Australia, okay. but you know, uh, I met him at a, at a kind of a meetup, uh, a breakfast meetup. And, um, you know, he was kind of fresh off the boat, off the boat from Australia, living in Los Angeles. Uh, he had started, he kind of started a, a company here. Um, you know, he's kind of like the one, one of those people who's just like, you know, uh, uh, just an entrepreneur, just genius, you know, just literally 20, 30 years of building businesses and, and, finding gaps and, and just doing it. That, that was his life, right? And so he had come over to Los Angeles and started a business here, but he didn't know anyone in Los Angeles and didn't know all the parties and what to go to. So we, we connected and, you know, I was like, hey, I can learn from this guy and, uh, and I'll show him around Los Angeles. And, and that's how we kind of connected and became good friends. And part of his journey while, while he was building businesses was he was like, you know, had built a product idea and was trying to sell it in retail. And at the time it was just like, this is crazy. You know, like, you, you, you know, you can't even launch a product on retail, you know, they want consignment and, you know, it was just, it was crazy. And, uh, you know, found a little bit of Amazon and said, Hey, let me, let me try this. He'd been trying to grow a business on Amazon, wasn't working. And, and he, you know, he saw a conference in, in Las Vegas and, and was like, Hey, he's going to go. And he was like, why don't you come and check it out? And so I just kind of went along, um, with him and, uh, the penny dropped for me there where I was like, this is everything that I want in terms of being able to one, you know, I've been in a, in a time-based business for 20 years in advertising, selling my time or selling our time as, as, as an agency and, and how, how non-scalable that is. Um, and then moving into this product based income business where you are literally selling products and you can scale it all day. Um, you know, I was like, this is, this is awesome. Uh, and it kind of checked all the boxes boxes for me. It was like, you know, it had a creative side coming up with products. It had a data side. It had a, you know, it had a, had a, um, a, a business building side and it was something that you could do on the, on the side. So, you know, I started doing that, um, you know, all, all the stars aligned for me. I, I was going through, you know, personally, I was going through um, kind of a, a separation and, and a divorce. Um, you know, I was kind of at that point in my career where, you know, I, I think you, you just reassess everything at that time, right? And and you were like, okay, finally, I can really focus on on the things that, 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 are, that are me and me, me as an individual and what I want to do. And so that was a lot of the motivation um, that helped me just, you know, kind of figure out, Hey, how to how to consistently build a, a business on the side while I had this this career and, and had the time to focus. And within eight months, I launched my product. And within uh, a year, you know, I was doing um, you know 50, 60, 70 thousand a month, and and uh, you know could kind of exit my 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 advertising gig and packed up my box and you know put a smile on my face and just walked out the door. And I was like, hey man, I'm I'm gonna go do this now. You know, so that that was kind of um, how I started. And what was also cool is that my first product. Um, was in collaboration with my brother and he and he lived in uh he lives in london uh he's actually a product designer um so that was also great i was like great i've got yeah. a product designer on my team uh but that was also a really cool way of just like you know i'm close to my brother and staying connected to him uh in building this business um across kind of across the ocean you know it was, was pretty cool so um there was a lot of fun and and you know some real real good success in, in creating that first uh product how how big was that company so when you were starting zong with with everything you guys have built how big was the amazon company when you guys were were starting to build on guru yeah it was doing you know uh you know i think you know we, we we definitely crossed six figures a month um you know at some point and uh you know we we, we continue to build that business and we still have that business today actually and we have a, oh, we have a couple of a couple of amazon businesses that, that we've grown um and we've got partners that kind of run with those 
um, you know, because I, I just don't have the time to focus on that. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm still involved, uh, you know, on, on a high level basis in those businesses. But, um, yeah, you know, the, the, it was growing successfully. And, and um, you know, I, I, it, it was interesting to me because I enjoyed the process of building, um, you know, the, the Amazon business. And, and, and I see the success in that. And, I, and I'm a true proponent of that model because I think it's probably one of the best opportunities we've ever had in our lifetime to build and scale financial wealth, um, no matter race, religion, country, education level, none of that matters. You know, it's one of those true, um, anybody can kind of get into this. So I, I'm, I'm very passionate about that. And we, uh, we can talk about how, how that passion I bring into, into our team and Zongir as well. But, um, you know, uh, there was just an opportunity, I think at the time where I was quite involved in, in the advertising business that I was in, we had, we had, somehow got involved in developing an internal enterprise application software for one of these big blue chip clients. And, um, you know, I was heading up the team and building that. So I was starting to get experience in how to build a software team. Uh, and then, um, you know, the opportunity came my way, which was like, Hey, um, you know, if we, if Adam is going to go and build this education business about how to truly build and scale a proper business and brand, which he's g- genius at. And at the time there's a lot of this, like get, get rich quick kind of stuff. Um, but they needed support in terms of software and data and how to find the right kind of products, which are not just the flash in the pan trends, but like, a, you know, truly analyzing a niche and truly understanding from a business perspective, what is a good product to launch? Um, you know, that, that there was an opportunity to create that software because there was, you know, there was a lot of garbage in, in the space at the time, uh, unicorn smasher and, you know, this kind of tech tech for being tech, but didn't understand the business objective. And yeah. So I was like, well, let me, let me go and create this. So, so that's how I started. And, um, was quite involved in the in the education training side of 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 uh the you know helping customers to truly understand what kind of products in the business side which was was great and getting up on stage with four thousand people and you know all that kind of fun stuff um but at the same time building the software side so um you know there was a balance we were building the, the amazon business but also starting to build the tech uh, at, at the same time yeah. how how difficult was and and it's uh, I have a similar experience in terms of like we we've built our own software from like a fulfillment logistics and like I, I call myself a non technical perspective and I was you you started to get your feet in the water but how how difficult it was and and how quickly did you pick up on like the SaaS development like building it I'm I'm curious like why you picked that SaaS angle especially because that's a whole new perspective you could have probably built anything in the Amazon space and it would have kicked off. Why SaaS and how difficult was it to actually build the tools uh, that early on with Amazon? Yeah, I think um, the idea of, of SaaS at that time, I think, I think was was very new. But it wasn't even a word. I don't think at that point. Yeah, right? no, it was, it was, it was around. But I think this idea of a, of a subscription based technology company um, and and uh, how valuable that was, um, and if you could build that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's going to be extremely valuable, um, you know, was part of it. But I think it was more, you know, at the time, it was just more like, hey, uh, there's an audience that wants to create these products on Amazon. I'm passionate about it. And how can we, how can, you know, the, the word that sticks in my head was like garbage in, garbage out. It was kind of an advertising marketing term, right? Which is like, if you get garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. And everything there at the time was really garbage in, right? And I was like, how can we make this much more relevant, um, you know, filtering the data to find the most impactful data and present it in a visual way that answers key business questions so that they're getting the right information in so they can create the best products possible. So, you know, that was the passion of, of what we need to do. And and I'd obviously building that, that enterprise software solution uh, and managing that team, I'd got my feet wet, you know, going four or five years back in terms of even building websites and that kind of stuff. So I understood the aspects of, of I had a, I had a, history and, and, and experience in, in building websites and building uh, software um, from managing the team. So, you know, I, you know, I understood, um, you know, everything from, from UX to how, how to build um, and, 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 a, and a high level understanding of what people need to do on the team to, to build something and what that team looks like. So I had that kind of basic experience, but, uh, you know, was it hard? Um, yeah, it was incredibly <laughs> difficult. I think, I think, yeah. um, you know, Adam had, had jumped in with Reliable and, and they were going gangbusters. They were building their business. And, and um, you know, obviously our, our, our software was, was the, the recommended software. Um, and so we were building 
um, to try and, you know, um, satisfy this audience that were looking at us. And, and in a lot of ways, we weren't ready, right? So, um, you know, we had an MVP being built out of India, you know, late nights of, uh, you know, you know, building the product and, and, and trying to understand accents. And, um, you know, I, I yeah. you know, just, just kind of work through all of that. And, and at the end of the day, building a, a product that was just trying to solve for the now, um, uh, without it, without a clear understanding of, 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 um, you know, the end objective of what we're trying to create. And, th and that's probably one of the biggest lessons is, you know, when you, when you have a team of software developers that, that, that focus on just like the shortcut, Hey, fixing this for right now, but don't truly understand the business objective or what you're trying to achieve and, and building something that's scalable, you end up in a position where you've just got a, a POS, uh, you know, a piece of software that all you're doing is fixing bugs and you can't scale, you know, and, and we definitely got into that position at some point, you know, so, um, you know, then trying to find, um, you know, the, the team, the CTO that can take the, the, the product and the software to the next level was, was kind of my next big, um, step, right. Cause uh, you know, at some point an MVP is an MVP and yeah, it's cheap, but it's ineffective and it's not scalable. Right. So you've got to find the right team. How much did you have to put in? So when you were initially investing to build out this kind of MVP, this, the, the bootleg setup, which now what has become Zonguru and this, this massive enterprise suite, how much did you put in to actually build this initial one? Oh man, uh, I think I think it, you know the initial investment was was you know it wasn't wasn't substantial. I think it was a like maybe one hundred fifty two hundred thousand somewhere around there in in terms of helping to build the MVP. Um, I think we were just in a lucky position as well that you know we, we were building it, but we already had marketing. We had we had pipeline of customers coming in that were paying us right. So um, you know we, we we very quickly broke even and could start investing that funds into um, our team. So. You know that was a lucky thing is that we didn't have to put like a million but you know we've put millions and millions into into zonguru but that's based on cash that's been coming in right um you know we we ran we ran it as a as a bootstrapped um you know profitable business for for four four years right i think i think is um uh what we did for a long time and we invest all that money in, in really building the software so you know the initial investment before obviously starting to cash in was like two hundred thousand or something on there yeah where um uh, where did the first customers come from because obviously it's you you had the funnel that was already coming in like and because i'm always super curious especially when building a new product out or brand or SaaS system like those first hundred customers the first thousand customers is like is everything did you guys just have that funnel already building did you have to go in and like do cold calls yourself and doing the marketing how how involved and in what did the process of the first hundred look like yeah i mean you know we obviously had reliable education as a partner as a partner and they were doing you know, they were growing their audience and th those were ultimately signing up and using our, our, our platform. But, mm -hmm. you know, that came a little bit, you know, we had to build a platform and have everything right. So, so you know, I, I clearly remember, um, you know, going and, and, and you know, getting the, the first product available based in Hollywood in Los Angeles. You know, we were working out of the first WeWork, actually, it was the first WeWork built. Um, you know, we had a little, little office there and we were in there and I was literally just, ho you know, hosting meetups in the back of a bar um god that bar's disappeared now there's a there's a bar near there but they had a little back room it's a, it was a pub I'll, I'll think of the name in a second but um it's kind of a famous little uh pub on on hollywood and and uh, uh in the back room there i just ho host these meetups and say hey who wants to come it was even before meetup.com like it was like it's crazy how we got these people together and i'd have five or six people in there trying to sell them on software and uh the idea of amazon and how to build a business so um there's a few pictures i have of, of me in this cd pub you know presenting to five people and you know celebrating you know the one one person sign up so those stories of of kind of getting out there and just trying to get the one or the two and your first 10 your first 100 your first thousand um you know those are those are all there right so it's it's a uh, uh, we had to work hard for those first few for sure oh man it's crazy Wait, and uh so so let's uh let, let's look at so that was 2014 or 2015 when, 2016. When was that was 2016. 2016. Yeah. How difficult was it in terms of the actual like Amazon technicalities? Amazon was a lot different back then. And obviously the tools, the utility, like I, I like to call it like the wild, wild west way back then. How difficult it was from a back end to actually like integrate, talk to Amazon. Uh, I, just that whole process. I'm super curious about it because we're we struggle with it on a daily basis. But I can't imagine way back when. It's as difficult as it is now. I mean, I think Amazon at the end of the day, it's a little bit better now because we have a, a relationship with Amazon, but you know, 
whether you want a relationship or, or with Amazon or not is, is, uh, is, uh, you know, you have to decide because <laughs> it comes with its problems. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, and in those days they had an API, um, you know, you could access the API, um, you know, it's, it was a lot mess messier than it is right now, but you know, the Amazon API is still very messy. You know, there's, there's hidden secrets in that stuff that, um, you know, our developers can tell you stories about for sure, but you know, it's, it's a rat, some of it's a rat's nest back there, but you know, they obviously come out with, with, with a lot of uh, newer APIs right now. And, and, um, yeah, it was, it was wild west. You know, there's no documentation on any of the APIs. It was just getting in there and trying to figure it out. Um, you know, certainly no one you could speak to, um, you know, or wanted to speak to at that time. Um, and, uh, you know, there was a lot of, um, wild west software out there and, and we always took the position of like, you know, in making decisions about like what kind of products or, or software we were going to create, whether it's gray hat, you know, white hat, black hat, or whatever, um, you know, I always leaned on the, on the, on the idea or leaned on the side of, of like, Hey, at the end of the day, we're at Zonguru and me and the team are passionate about helping people create amazing products to sell on Amazon. Right. And, and that means helping get the data to create better products. And once they have better products, give them data to be able to expose them to more traffic and more customers on Amazon. And, and as long as we kept aligning with, with, with that vision, we knew we were aligned with, um, Amazon's principles and, and ultimate, you know, goal, which is like, how do we, you know, get customers to buy amazing products on Amazon and how do we get sellers to put amazing products on Amazon? And how are we making them the best? Because at the end of the day, if Amazon's not create, you know, Pat doesn't have a platform that showcases the best products in the industry, um, the latest, greatest, most amazing customer products, they're going to die. Right. So as long as we could help on that front, we're helping Amazon and Amazon will support us. And, and that's been true throughout the years, right? So we've always been uh, white hats, you know, aligned with Amazon's principles um, and developed software that, you know, in the long term is going to help people create better products on Amazon. Well, it, it, what's super interesting too, like when uh, when I think it was on Guru, I think even about the Australian market. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if that's biased because of the accent, but you guys have such a strong thought process and you guys are obviously global in terms of, of everything you guys offer, but why the strong push on the Australian piece? And why is that still a part of your guys like bread and culture now? Uh, and obviously, as you guys have expanded and grown your teams, is it just because mm. it, it's kind of the, the hometown hero? Or, or why? is well, that? Well, 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 the first one, Blair, and this, you know, you're going to get dinged for this, but my accent is South African, not Australian. So you got that one wrong. Uh, <laughs> but um, unplug but, the microphone now. Yeah, That's yeah. on me. Yeah, so no, I grew up in South Africa, um, yeah, Johannesburg, and then and then lived in London for a while, and then and then LA since two thousand six. Yeah, um, but the, the, the connection with Australia was through uh, you know with, with Adam, who started the reliable education business in Australia. Okay. Um, you know, so he ultimately went there to he went back to to start a business there. It's a global business, but you know he had a big Australian contingent um, saying, "Hey, guys, in you know little Australia, separated from from the US." There's a huge opportunity on Amazon.com and there's a huge opportunity because you can live anywhere in the world and you can sell on the biggest marketplace in the world over yeah. 300 million people. You need to do this now and you need to learn how to do it in, in the best way possible. And so they've helped thousands of Australians, tens of thousands of Australians, you know, create businesses on Amazon. So there is a strong connection with there because ultimately they were helping Australians sell on Amazon.com and we were the, we, we are and, and the, you know, the software of choice for those guys. So we've got a very strong tie with Australia. I've obviously been there many times, you know, big events and, um, yeah, it's, it's, a um, you know, we're obviously way beyond just Australia now. We're, you know, we're, of course. we're probably bigger in, in the U S than, than Australia, but, um, you know, uh, in fact, we definitely are, but, um, you know, we, we always, um, have that, that strong support for them. And, and importantly, we've, we've integrated with Amazon Australia and we've, we've seen, you know, we've been watching that very closely in terms of the data over the years. And, and, you know, it was probably beginning of last year where we really truly got excited about what we were seeing there. Um, and just that, you know, that idea of like, you know, going back to your earlier point, which is like, Hey, what was it like selling on Amazon in 2015? And, um, you know, it was a very different time then. Um, and, and, you know, you could launch a product for $10,000 and that product would probably be making, you know, launch for 10,000 was making 50,000 a month. And now you'd probably have to spend like 
you know, 150,000 and they probably will be doing 5 million a month, right? So, mm. so the, that's the, the, the overall growth just as the marketplace grew, your product organically just grew in terms of numbers. And you're seeing that in Australia right now, which is like that beginning of the hockey stick, which is like, if you just get in on Amazon right now in Australia in the right market, you can be in a way bigger niche, you know, like dog toys if you want or whatever. Um, and yeah, you're making a lot less than you are making on, on, uh, on amazon.com, but it's not as competitive. You can get to page one pretty easily. And literally, if you just sit there for two, three years, your organic growth is going to be 30 X, right? Because you know, every, it, it, you know, everyone's starting to use Amazon and Amazon is just great at taking over a marketplace. So it's becoming the day to day, um, behavior of, of, of Australian customers. And so the, the hockey stick growth is there just by staying in stock and staying on the page, which is, which is awesome. Right. Well, it's, it's bang on like, uh, back when I was looking at a, a seller back in university, I was going to amazon.com. I was finding what already had that hockey stick. It might be too competitive at that point because it kind of hit its maturity. And then I was in Canada. So I had that unique advantage, sort of mm-hmm. like an Australian market. And I was just launching identical products. They just, they didn't have that. And there, I wasn't doing anything new. I wasn't reinventing at the time. I wasn't making it any better. I was just replicating it, putting a new label on it. And it's, it's sounds like sort of similar to where Australia is, where you can almost like, it's like a time machine, which is crazy. You can see like before the garlic press or the baby caddies in the US market get hyper competitive. It's like, uh, if you can get in supplements before supplements are our supplements, it's, mm. it's nuts. It's really cool. And these early stage markets are like the perfect place. It's kind of the same way that people are taking bigger bets with like walmart.com, for example. It's very similar. Like you, you can just take the top categories. They're demand driven and you're just, you're replicating the process, which it's super cool. It's crazy. And, 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 you know, in, in the bigger scheme of things, e-commerce is still such a new industry. Um, and there's just you know, globally, there's just, there's just natural organic growth that's going to happen. I mean, you look at India, right? And, and I think e-commerce right now is like 3% of of the overall retail market or three or four, somewhere around there. And it's, yeah. you know, it's got the biggest population in the world. And, you know, are you telling me that in, in three or four years, like that, that number is not going to be way higher um, and, right. and Amazon is not going to be way bigger? It's, you know, it's, it's crazy. And yes, you, you've got to be more utilitarian in your approach with products, but it's absolutely going to grow. You know, someone the other day was like, oh, well, Amazon's launching in South Africa. Like, how are they going to do? I'm like, they're going to crash it because yeah. one, the biggest problem with e-commerce in, in, in Africa is is distribution. They don't, you know, they just, you know, people steal your shit before it arrives, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but, you know, they're going to they're gonna dominate that. They're going to figure all of that out. You know, Amazon Prime, they're going to they're gonna nail it and just absolutely crush that market. Um, and, and they're going to, it's that time machine. They're going to do replicate exactly what they did in, in all the other markets and done and been so, so successful. I think the biggest warehouse ever built in Australia was by Amazon like a year ago, you know, it's like mm. a couple of football fields big and, you know, none of the, the, the e-commerce giants in the space have ever even dreamt of building something that big. Right. So they know where it's going. Um, and so when everyone's like, Hey, you know, is Amazon too competitive? And, you know, I can't sell on Amazon.com. I'm like, well, why? Yeah. Have you looked at all the other markets? Like, first of all, Amazon.com is not too competitive. You just have to be more niche and use data in the right way. And you can absolutely crush it with a, with a product and you're going to get the shot because to my point earlier, Amazon has to give you the shot because they have to make sure they're getting the latest, greatest products for on sure. the market. So anything you launch, they're going to give you a shot. You just have to dominate when you, when you get that chance. But, um, you know, if, if that's not your market and you want to look at something else, you have a global market to choose from and, and, uh, and can grow. So there's, there's literally no excuse not to do it. Yeah. What you, and you're talking about sellers. What I thought is super interesting and I wanted to get your thoughts on it was that you, with your team at Zonguru, you also encourage a lot of them are, are sellers. They're actually Amazon sellers themselves. What was that thought process behind? Like how, how, how pushed is that? What do those dynamics look like? I'm interested because they're all entrepreneurs at heart, basically. Yeah. I mean that, you know, from, from the start, when I, when I started Zonguru, um, and part of it was, you know, I was passionate about the space, right? And 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 I could see this true ability to get financial wealth from from starting an Amazon business, selling your time, uh, which which an employee does, which is you know you get a salary, is not really scalable in terms of true life changing, you know, as wealth, right? Um, and and the and the sense of like, you know, which I take a lot of joy and satisfaction and pride in is, is building a team and. And understanding that the team that I build around me for Zonguru, someone is 
giving part of their life to being part of Zonguru, right? And and what is the what is the exchange that they're getting for for part of their life, right? One is, I think, on the smaller side, it should be salary, right? So so yeah, you're getting a salary, um, but on the other side, you 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 you're also getting um, you know uh, you know kind of growth in 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 your in your expertise and your experience you know, and, and being able to foster that and get someone to really build their their business skills around you know whether it's coding or, or whether it's um you know managing a team and, and their progression right that's that's my responsibility to to kind of oversee that and then the other part is also personal growth right because even though they're giving their time to zongu what's their personal growth like what what are what are they trying to do in their personal front to really grow right because you only have really really that 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 you know that limited amount of time so you know, my understanding on that was like, hey, you know, if someone can build, you know, we can pay or we can pay and that's great. But if someone wants to have a shot at, at scaling something even bigger than that and having, you know, this this asset outside of Zonguri and they can do it while they have, you know, a focus on Zonguri, then why not? So, um, you know, that side hustle of having an Amazon business, I thought it was a great idea. And pretty much everyone in these days is going to have some kind of side hustle, right? So why not be Amazon? And there's just a win-win there because they're learning the business they can apply to Zongu and they become they become the target audience and they and they 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 cross that that chasm of like what I struggled with when I was building the MVP and, and the India team was like they never truly understood our audience. They never mm. truly understood what they were building for. Um, and that that has inherent problems. And so now you have a team that is solving problems about what they're doing on their business all day. They truly understand our audience and they're they're building software and product and customer success and training and everything around that. Um, you know, it just it just truly works. So so we have an incentive program that anybody who on our team who wants to start an Amazon business will fund their first um, capital investment of, of stock um, up to a certain amount, um, and then and then uh, it's a it's a zero percent loan that they pay back uh, in in a year or two once once they've grown their, their Amazon business successfully. And if they don't, you know, do they pay me back? Probably not. Um, but you know, a lot of them have been successful now. You know, our CTO is a seven-figure seller. You know, um, our, our, he, he was he was a, a seller before he came on board. But our CTO is our head of product. He built it while he's on Zagu. He's pretty much a seven-figure seller now. A customer success head. Uh, you know, she's sold three Amazon businesses, I think, and you know has two more running. Um, you know, another person customer success. Uh, you know. Uh, Biz Dev, you know, or you know, a couple more on the developer side. So they all are sellers and kind of stand behind that for sellers, buy sellers, um, and uh, and it's a, it's a great win win there. So um, you know, there's there's pretty cool. You know, at the end of the day, um, you have a better product, happier team, and if they leave Zongu or when they do or wherever they go, they have this asset they built and they have a scalable business that that is a true life skill that you know gives them something else to 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 have on the side while they kind of building their career. Oh man, that's sweet. That's super cool. No, it's a really cool, cool idea, and uh, obviously they they, they love it. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. it makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. yeah. Tra- transitioning over to the now and where things are. How are you thinking about this space when it comes to software? When it comes to the Amazon, where you're going to be taking on Guru? Obviously, there there's big talks about. There's a lot of acquisitions happening. There's a lot of new dynamics in the space. Uh, there's big boys entering. How how are you thinking about these dynamics? Where do you think this area is going to go over the next couple of years? And how is Zonguru going to play into the strengths and and the gaps in the current market? Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> it's a loaded question for you, but <laughs> it's a lo- yeah, it's a loaded question going many different ways. But I think you know, you know, the transparent answer on 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 Zonguru over the years, right? Is is we've all, we've we've built an in, uh, an insane software set that, that truly, uh, I think, has some. You know, we have 17 tools right now. We're connected in four different marketplaces. Um, you know, the, the the bigger players in the space, like a Helium 10, we, you know, hand on heart, I can truly to stand up to that technology and say, hey, we we are similar in some ways and we're better in a lot of ways as well. Um, mm. And and from a technology perspective, um, and from what we're trying to solve for Amazon sellers, I believe we do it the best in the space, um, and that's purely because. You know, from the beginning, we focused on that garbage in, garbage out, which is, and, and the opposite, right? Which is, how do we find the 80-20? What is the, the most impactful data 
that, that we can visualize and showcase and automate in the right way to move the needle for an Amazon business? And how can we do it in the most efficient way so that you can just move through, you know, and, and focus on the bigger things of what you're trying to do with your business? That's, that's what we've always focused on. So we never necessarily focus on shiny objects. We focus on what truly matters to moving the needle. Um, but that's sometimes a hard sell when, when you're trying to sell that, uh, you know, through a marketing paid ad, um, uh, you know, to, to an audience that, that, you know, we're competing with, with a helium 10 who's got, you know, you know, in a jungle sky, who I think they had 300 million in funding or whatever it is, um, you know, and, and have built out these teams to build out these third party affiliates and influencers and, and, and people, you know, that are, that are, that are selling their product. Um, it's really hard to compete against that. So, you know, um, we're not as, as we don't have as much awareness, but when people truly find us, they, they, they understand why, um, we are, um, one of the best kept secrets in the space. Right. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, so, um, we, we compete against big juggernauts and we don't have as much awareness as they do because we don't have the marketing dollars that they have, but, um, we have a software that absolutely competes. And so, um, kind of where, where, where to next? One, I think for Zonguru, we're on a path right now where we took on VC funding uh, last year, right? We boosted yep. up before that, but we, we we took on some VC funding um, mainly because, you know, again, we, we, we're competing in a space where there's, there's gazillions of dollars, right? You've got not only um, software companies with, with, you know, huge raises, um, uh, but also, um, you know, aggregators, you know, who, who are trying to, uh, you know, flood the, flood, flood the market with a lot of dollars and, and uh, you know, just we, we, it was necessary to be, be able to stand out in that, in that noise, right? So, um, so we took on some of that, but we've, we focus a lot on our enterprise product. I think there is some dynamics changing within the seasoned Amazon e-commerce space on, on .com, which is, mm-hmm. you know, this whole maturing of, of specialist agencies and aggregators um, and, and, you know, managing bigger brands and the shift of through the pandemic and everything else, the shift of big brands that are now present on, on Amazon and other marketplaces and, and they need software and help to, to kind of scale. So, um, you know, we, we asked that question eight months ago, Hey, do we have a, a, a tool set that fits with more ent- enterprise agency specialists, aggregators, big brands, um, and can we service them? And so, you know, we, we, we did our MVPs on that and we have an amazing fit actually, um, and that's probably one of the biggest, what well, is the biggest growing area of Zongu right now in terms of, um, you know, acquisition and growth and, and, and just that ability to sit in front of um, an enterprise client who's a specialist and spend an hour demoing the product uh, right. and getting feedback like, holy shit, this is the best product we've seen in the marketplace is kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's rewarding in, in, a, in a sense and it's good to see that we've really built something unique and special and, and that works when an expert really needs to use it at the highest level. So that's kind of our focus right now, which brings in a whole nother dynamic of, of SaaS, which is uh, building outbound sales, which we've never done because, you know, anybody who knows SaaS, when you, when you have a, a certain average revenue per user or, or AC, you know, a annual contract value, that's, that's at, at the lower side of, of an SMB smaller seller, you, you know, you, it's just, you know, uh, marketing and, and, and webinars and promotions and PPC. And, you know, that's how you sell them. There's a customer acquisition cost, but obviously the more enterprise you go, you can build out an outbound sales team and you can afford to have that. And so, uh, that's, that's another whole, you know, massive strategy and tactic of SaaS that, that we're exploring and building now, which, which is kind of fun. Um, so we're doing a lot of that and we have some big aggregators who are using our product, a lot more data, a lot of more high level conversations. We've built out a webinar, which is really focused on, on enterprise questions, mm. We've got a whole bunch of reporting that just ask much high level questions that bigger brands want answered. So we have a lot of success there and it's, and it's, it's kind of rewarding, I think for the team as well, because we have these, you know, inherent experts who are Amazon sellers, but sometimes you're having a low level conversation where someone's like, well, what products should I pick? You know, yeah. and, and, you know, how do I, how do I find my first product? You know, is green the best color to sell? You know, you're like, okay, good. Okay, cool. We've had this conversation a thousand times. So, you know, how can we elevate the, the level of conversation to a level that's really rewarding for our team? And so at this enterprise level, the, the questions are much more sophisticated. And so there's a lot more um, joy and satisfaction coming from the team because they're like, finally, I can talk to someone at the level that, that, that we, that we're at. Right. So I think that's pretty cool for the team. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I think, I think that's in general where, where Zongu is going uh, in terms of like 
SaaS in our in our industry. I think it's the, the overall evolution of SaaS, which is which is happening. Which is at the end of the day, you know, the vision of SaaS, right? You know, the vision of SaaS five years ago was like, hey, let's build software that has data that that you can showcase and people can manually choose things and go, okay, cool, let's do that, let's do this, right? Where it's obviously evolving to right now is like, let's get all the data we can and let's get AI to to kind of filter through that data and let's let's at the end of the day try and create a human being, an expert human being that can say, you know, hey Blair, uh, you you logging in today? Cool, I've looked at all your data. These are some things that you need to do, and you need to do it, and you need to verify and do them yourselves. But here's some automated things that we we're doing as well, and we've automated and we've made you an extra fifty thousand bucks today, and you know. We'll, we'll keep going. So it's like this this true consultant who can bring in all the data and then automate and elevate and, and scale your business, right? So that's ultimately where where software is going and and the fun, exciting part of AI and and um, you know again AI is AI, right? So you've got to look through through a business lens like we do with other software, and we have to be able to answer the right questions. So that's where 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 SaaS is going and where we're going for sure. Um, and you know, in terms of Rollups in the space, yeah, you know, it's it's you know, it's the maturing of a normal industry in e-commerce and SaaS. You know, there's going to be rollups happening, and there's going to be rollups that fail, and there's going to be rollups that are successful. Um, and you know, it's going to shift, and and you know, you know, will some of the bigger companies lose sight of of where they're going? Yes, maybe. Um, will Zongiri get its you know time in the sunshine as as the the hottest tool and and the one with the most awareness? If we keep doing what we're doing for sure it's, it's going to come because um you know we focus on the end customer and we don't lose sight of that you know we're, we're in a position where we're trying to bring the best value to a customer we're not trying to you know thank goodness we, we chose the right vc partner we just we're not just trying to grow the the ultimate end goal for, for a vc right mm. last question i have you do a lot of things you're juggling a lot of parts. You're also running this company. You're 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 building with VC now, so obviously you have partners and investors. What does a calendar day look like for you right now? What time do you uh, wake up? How many meetings do you have? What sort of meetings? Just a quick minute or two. I just want to I want to see uh, an understanding of kind of what that workflow day looks like, and if there's consistencies, if it's a madhouse or a little bit of in between. I think the uh, you know I mean you know my my developer team is based in Bulgaria, um, in Sofia. And um, that's where our CTO is based. Um, he was from Toronto, but he's based there. So we have a big overlap with Europe. So obviously my, my early mornings are, are very busy, um, connecting with the guys there and sometimes my late, my late nights. But, um, you know, uh, I would say in, on the calendar, um, you know, you, you get to a point where they always say, oh, you know, it's like your life is run by your calendar. Right. And I think as you get more and more busy, um, it's important that that your whole life is in your calendar. So it's not just work that's in there; it's everything on your life, right? So mm. um, in my calendar, there's I block out time for workouts. You know, Blair's trying to book a podcast; you can't overbook that time, right? So, Come on, um, you know it's uh, it, you know so so your calendar becomes uh, you know everything. Um, and and if you don't put your personal life into it, then then that gets overridden by by work, and that's just not cool, right? So um, you know it's it's. It's pretty busy mornings, pretty busy evenings. Overlap with Australia, sometimes late nights, but you know during the during the midday is kind of where I, I build out some personal time, and then and then usually like four or five o'clock with my kids because I've got two two young kids, two girls, uh, yeah. two years old and and six months old. So I'm I'm in the thick of it right now, you know. So I've got to make time for them as well. So you know, um, I would also say, and and anybody you know who's starting to to hustle and and build a company. One and, and I say this for every exec person in my team, um, you know, and thank goodness this has changed because you know five six years ago and especially coming from advertising, busy for the sake of being busy was like the cool thing. Oh, I'm so busy. Oh my god, everything's yeah, going yeah. on. It's so crazy, you know. And like if you look at it now, it's like, dude, if that's how your life is, you're doing everything wrong, you know. Mm. And and if if you're cranking 60, 70 hour weeks and and uh, there's time and a place for that, absolutely. But if you don't build in time for 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 rest and for for space, space is the probably the right word. Um, you're going to be a uh, you, you're going to be a detriment to the to the team and to the company and to everyone in the long term, right? And so you have to build in space to um, to recuperate, but also to think, right? And and especially at the exec level, like 
you know, sometimes you're like, oh my God, I'm not busy right now. I'm like, okay, well, you know, that's good because sometimes you need to reflect on stuff and you need to be able mm-hmm. to create that space to be able to understand the vision. And then, and then your brain kind of has been working on the, on behind the scenes while you've been busy. And then when you give it space, all the kind of building blocks start to, to fall into place. Right. And so, you know, I don't know how many times I've gone for a run and just put on like some good old techno music from 20 years ago. And my brain yeah. just starts to click into place and everything falls in. And I'm like, okay, you know, that run, I've answered a hundred questions that I've been struggling with for like the last week. Right. So you've got to build in that space to, 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 um, to put the blocks together. Mm. John, man, this has been so good. I, I, uh, I, I have a thousand more questions. We might need to, we might need to have another two episodes at this point with, with how big my master list of questions were, but <laughs> I, I want to leave it. I want to leave it here. Um, make sure that everything was digestible because you had so many good snippets in there. And I think between founders and merchants, there was, there was a lot of wins, uh, that I, that I think we're going to be utilizing with, with our crew too. John, where, where can the, all the folks find you, whether it's personally with Zonguru, you guys are doing a lot of cool things. I, I want to make sure uh, everyone comes, checks you guys out and, and what you guys are up to. I mean, the best way, you know, I mean, you can get around LinkedIn. Uh, you can email me if you want to. I mean, trust me, it's no secret. Everyone's got my email, John, yeah. John at Zonguru. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, you know, check out our Instagram channel. There's a lot of cool, fun stuff uh, around helping um, sellers find cool product ideas, uh, you know, taking the fun out of sellers, uh, you know, there's some cool reels and, uh, you know, it's, it's not a showcase of Zongu, it's a, it's a showcase of sellers and, and kind of the questions we need to answer every day. So that's worth checking out our website as well. Our blog has got some really cool stuff. So plenty of ways to, to connect. Um, but yeah, I think, I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, going back to the question of calendar, um, and, and, um, you know, creating space to, to, to create something for your life. I think, I think it's critical and everyone, there's no excuse these days. You know, we have all the technology, we have all the SAS, we have all the, all the, all the information to, to create whatever it is that we want to create, right. And be successful with that outside of our day to day grind. Um, and it's just a matter of like creating that, that, that time and space to, to do that. And, and, um, the biggest lesson I learned in creating those businesses while I was busy with my advertising career was, was, um, was this idea of minor stones, which is, um, you know, set an end goal of where you want to be and then break that down into literally what I need to do today, this week to move the needle. And you'll be surprised it's actually not that much, but if you do it consistently every week, you'll get there. Right. So it's about like, Hey, um, you know, what I need to do this week, I need to do this one thing and forget about the end goal. And then next week, what is the next thing on the list? And you just keep going like that and you'll get there very, very quickly. But if you focus just on the end goal and the, and the, the, the mountain you need to climb, you'll never get there. Um, so, you know, break it down, put it in the calendar, um, and just make sure you do a little bit of, a little bit of it on, on your journey. Yeah. You'll get there. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. I need to put that on a, on a quote at this point, John, I, I'm going to be living by that bad boy. <laughs> uh, John, thanks so much, man. I, I appreciate you, uh, jumping on this and, and spreading all your knowledge about building companies, building the Amazon company, a SaaS company, a lot of really cool stuff happening. So I know there's a lot of eyes on you guys of everything you guys are doing. So. I'm, uh, I'm wishing the best and you guys are crushing it. I mean, you got uh, you got the whole crew over here rooting for you guys.